For better or for worse, you happen to live in a state with a very, very complicated plate boundary. California is located between the Pacific and North American plates, and the plate boundary changes quite a bit as you go from north to south. We're going to take a look at the current plate boundary along Western North America, as well as a look at how this plate boundary came to be. Here I have an image of Southern California. The yellow lines are faults, and this thicker line here is the San Andreas Fault that goes down to the Salton Sea and eventually into the Gulf of California to join the Gulf of California Spreading Center system, which we'll talk about in just a moment. All the other yellow lines are smaller faults that are within the plate boundary and are accommodating motion between the plates. The motion between the two plates is shown with the purple arrows. North America is moving to the southeast relative to the Pacific plate, which is moving to the northwest. Here's a map of the modern Pacific North American plate boundary from just into Canada down to just into Mexico. And the boundary is pretty complicated. I realize you don't have this picture, so I thought we would draw it together. So get out your color pens and pencils, and here we go. First of all, try to trace the North American continent like I did. I've got Canada up here. I have Baja California, Mexico, and mainland Mexico, and rough boundaries indicating where Canada and Mexico are. I'm going to label the two plates and indicate the direction of those two plates. I'm also going to add some cities, Los Angeles and San Francisco. Now in this diagram, I'm going to use the standard colors of green for transform boundaries, red for divergent boundaries, and blue for convergent boundaries. We're going to start in our local transform boundary region with the major structure known as the San Andreas Fault. This is a transform. The arrows show how things move across the transform, and you'll notice those arrows are parallel to the direction the plates move. The San Andreas goes through San Francisco Bay and then off to sea, and in Southern California, it sort of does a little bit of a bend as it goes down towards the Gulf of California, and we'll talk about that later in the class. So the San Andreas Fault continues to the south into the Gulf of California and to other transforms, and then it becomes part of a divergent zone. So all of these little red double lines indicate spreading centers, and this is the Gulf of California spreading center system. So down here, we have a divergent plate boundary between the two plates. As we go north, the San Andreas Fault terminates against another transform, which is part of another spreading center system, and that's the Juan de Fuca spreading center system, and thus we have another divergent boundary. But this is not a boundary between the Pacific and North American plate because there's something else right here in between. And that is marked on the east side by this subduction zone, the Cascadia subduction zone. And so up here we have a convergent boundary. Now again, this is not a boundary between North America and Pacific because there is a little plate in here. And that is the Juan de Fuca plate, a very important plate that is subducting beneath Oregon and Washington and Northern California and creating active volcanoes such as Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier. I'd like to point out this region right here where the San Andreas Fault, the Oceanic Transform, and the Cascade Subduction Zone all seem to meet. And this is known as a triple junction. It's a place where three plates meet and it is part of the story where three plates meet, not meets. <laughs> um, and it is part of the story of how this boundary evolved. So now we're going to move on to that history. As you recall, we've talked about Pangaea being a supercontinent 250 million years ago and then breaking up as the Atlantic and the Indian Oceans opened. But we haven't really talked about what happened out here on the edge of Pangaea. Well, what was going on was subduction. For about 200 million years, this Pacific plate out here and some other plates that are no longer there were subducting below the edge of North America and South America. And that is shown here. Here's a huge, huge subduction zone. And then these are the divergent zones showing all the new oceans opening up. And this occurred until about 35 million years ago. What happened then? Well, there was a spreading center out in the Pacific Ocean between two plates called the Farallon and the Pacific Plate. And you learned about this in the last video. When that spreading center reached the trench, because the whole thing was moving into the trench, remember trenches subduction zone, that became unstable. And instead of having a spreading center, we started to have two triple junctions, one migrating north and one migrating south. 
And between them, we had a transform boundary form, and that lengthened over time to become what it is today, the transform boundary between the Pacific and North American plates in California. You'll also notice in this picture that California and Nevada look kind of squished up here in these early pictures. And that's because it isn't until about 20 million years ago that this region out here started to stretch and extend. And the orange, the dark orange you see are regions where the crust was being pulled apart in an east-west direction. Is this related to the spreading center that got subducted? Possibly, we're not completely sure. But we do know that this is the order of events. So essentially, you can think about this picture at 25 million years ago as the beginning of the San Andreas Fault transform boundary. Let's move forward in time to the last 10 million years. The transform boundary lengthened over time as those triple junctions moved farther and farther. The northern triple junction moved to the north to where it presently is, and that is at the south end of the Juan de Fuca plate. The southern triple junction moved to the south. Eventually, part of the transform that was off the coast was abandoned and a new spreading center began in the Gulf of California. Again, we have simultaneous stretching of the crust up here in these regions. Now you can see that Nevada looks pretty much the size it is today. This is called basin and range extension. I'm going to show you a map that shows the topography. So here we are looking down the basin and range, which is outlined in this red dashed line. And within it, you can notice that there are long north-south trending mountains and then low basins in between them. And so basins are the lows, ranges are the mountain range. And the arrows here that are kind of reddish color are showing you that all of this is from stretching east to west. So this whole region is technically deforming because of the plate boundary. Some even consider it part of the plate boundary. As I mentioned, we currently have the Cascade subduction zone up here, and the little bit of the Farallon plate that's left is the Juan de Fuca plate. And then the Gulf of California began spreading about 5 million years ago. I actually did my doctorate thesis out in the Gulf of California, uh, well, actually on Baja, right about this location here. And I was trying to examine the history of the opening of the Gulf of California by mapping volcanic rocks, dating them back in the lab with argon-argon geochronology. I was doing paleomagnetic analysis to see if I could find rotations of various blocks. And there is an old model. I have a new model. This is me back in my field days. I was out there for three months, for three winters, so nine months total, mapping around and enjoying life in the desert. I'm now going to show you an animation that shows this whole story that we just talked about. Along the right hand side, we have time from 40 million years ago to the present. And so there's a bar that's going to go upward as time goes on. We have spreading occurring between the Pacific and Farallon plates. Here's the subduction zone that was along North America for so long. And now we're going to watch as that spreading center system hits the subduction zone. There, it's contacted it. And now I'm going to pause. So now we have this one triple junction going to the north between these three boundaries. We have another one going to the south. And this one's a little bit complicated because they're showing some, some detail here in the Southern California region. But right now we're at about 18 million years ago. Now you can see the basin and range stretching. And here we are at the present day. Let's take a look at that again. 30 million years, 20 million years, 15, 10, 5, and today. So that's it for our introduction to plate tectonics, which will form the base of all the rest of our studies this semester. We'll certainly come back to it when we talk about how rocks form and minerals form and how earthquakes occur. And speaking of earthquakes, that will be our next topic after exam number one, and we're going to be starting with faults and folds.